So over the past week, I had the privilege to attend the Grand Challenges Annual Meeting 2023. Let me just tell you that this annual meeting started in 2003 and it's already 20 years old. 20 years of celebrating collaboration, innovation, community, partnerships, impact. And it's happening in Dakar, Senegal, where hundreds of researchers, storytellers, media, digital creators, people in arts were gathered at the SICAD. Don't ask me what SICAD is. It's somewhere on the screen. What we came here to learn was also about new efforts to democratize vaccine development and manufacturing in Africa for Africans by Africans, <sighs> as well as efforts, you know, projects that are beginning to use AI for global health and development. But aside from that, there was also a word of funding to certain researchers from malaria. You know that we are malaria. It's something that usually happens and we need to sort that problem out before it ends us. Vaccine production, other important health solutions, conversations around innovative health solutions that will shape the future of most especially for me, the healthcare system in Africa and in the world. Also, another thing that was happening, you know, very, very frontline at the Grand Challenges meeting was to foster better and sustainable healthcare to all communities around the globe. And yours favorite, <laughs> me, myself, and I also got some of the hot gists of all the events. First of all, he opened with a one of the, you know, an address from the president of Senegal, Makisal, gave us that uh, thing that once you wear, you'll be hearing it in English so that, you know, it's French. Uh, I did not really pay attention when they were teaching French. But, you know, he was, collab he, was, he was talking about collaboration. He was talking about healthcare, you know, and then I hope you also know that one of the places where they are going to be manufacturing vaccines in Africa is actually in Senegal, but I'll come to that later. Other topics that were discussed also include innovation saves lives, collaboration saves lives, scientists say, you see, there was just plenty gist. But let me also tell you the one that concerned me and us. There were also spotlight presentations, you know, interviewed by a host of people. And then one of the things that really piqued my interest was I saw a poet you know, I've been looking up to Wana Udoban. She's one of, you know, when you write poems like this, you just be feeling it inside your chest. And one of her poems that I love was titled Contagious, somewhere on the screen. And I asked her, you know, interviewed her, asked her, so a poet, these were scientists are plenty. How, what exactly is the business here? And then she said that, you know, she was able to tell the stories about innovation from her own point of view as a poet. Because let's face it, me and you, we don't need to discuss in facts and figures. We need to go around talking like scientists every day. And you, what were the findings on your, you know, grains of rice? No, what's your jello fries? We don't we, we don't, we don't, we don't talk like that. So, you know, let's find out the mixture of poetry and, you know, science, right? For better storytelling. Because at the end of the day, if we finish getting all these things right and we don't get the storytelling properly, we might not get the problem when we we might not really get across to the people another person that i also met was dr neka mobison of mdoc healthcare and she's creating a chat or rather she has already created a chat spot that focused on women you know reproductive health care and one of the things that she also mentioned in my interview with her, very special interview, make sure you pay attention when it comes up, is that doctors must become AI literate, which I also love by the way, because we as doctors also need to be playing a front role when it has to do with the fusion of artificial intelligence and healthcare. Look, the Grand Challenges meeting 2023 is putting Africa on the spotlight on the vaccines created in Africa for Africa, and they are currently building a facility for vaccine creation. You know, I told you about it. And the name of this facility is called Madiba. Now, I'm not talking about the one in South Africa. I'm talking about manufacturing in Africa for disease immunization and building auditorium. We entered inside, it was big. They've not allowed us to take pictures, Sha, because they're still building it. But some places are already functional, right? And there are only a couple of other centers in the world that have been certified by the World Health Organization to create vaccine. So, you know that we are already getting to a place where we cannot just create vaccines for ourselves. We are also creating vaccines to support other countries. Ah, Africa with the Brits. It means that this is our healthcare is going to, you know, certain things are going to happen very soon. They are going to change a lot of lives. And also, we had Bill Gates listening to some of the researchers during the poster session, you know, looking, listening to ideas, which, you know, which is one of the reasons I think I like that particular man. You know, it's very loves ideas. If you want to catch his attention, just make sure you're sharing ideas on how to better the world. Very 
it listened a lot you know there were some people who were looking at eradicating malaria you know ai and how it's going to help with better health care which was beautiful and another thing you also did was give us a speech on how innovation will save lives then we also listened to dr ifenwa rhodes who is a phd doctor from nigeria as you can see another nigeria again aside from the poet who he is a principal investigator of the African Center for Excellence for Genomics for Infectious Diseases. Now, she highlighted some advancements in the vaccine and malaria, as well as calling out for funding for research. Because we know that for us to get some of these problems, we need, yes, we need rubber yeah, for it to happen. So we need to invest in the right places so that Africa can also become, you know, a forefront. We play, we'll not be playing follow, follow, come. I also interviewed Chinazo, who her and her team have figured out the way to use artificial intelligence to teach children in rural areas. We know that some teachers don't like to go to the village. Let's not blame them. But now that teachers are not going to the village, how are those children going to learn? Who will learn with artificial intelligence? She and her team, they figured out the way artificial intelligence creating certain videos. They're teaching geography. They're teaching science, technology, engineering, math in a way that these children can understand. See, eh? I really hope that that comes to fruition because let's face it, if we do not educate our future, we don't, we're not going to have any future. Yes. Ah, uh ah, -uh, is what I did here, educate our future. Oh, bust my brain. So, then, well, I, I, aside from that, I also learned the real history of the Senegalese jollof and I had a taste myself. Apparently, Nigerians, people are dragging something else that's not jollof. And how was Senegal? Senegal was hot. Let me know if you like. Let me not lie. See, my color has even changed. It has changed. So, we've learned that Africa has stepped onto the center stage of healthcare and development solutions in the world. But let's remember, vaccines are going to be produced here in Africa for us and by us. And in this imagination, no boss your brain. I don't know what else is because it shows that we're not ready. We're ready. Africa is ready. Make sure you subscribe. Comment also.